بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الله عز وجل سيز القرآن إن هذا القرآن يهدي للتي هي أقوى Indeed, this Qur'an guides to that which is best. Allah Azza wa sent the Qur'an as the last and final divine revelation upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it includes in it a complete and comprehensive code of life. It's a purification for the soul. He's got the answers for everything mankind needs. Malik ibn Dinar, rahmatullahi alayhi, said, Quran is the life of the soul. Just like rain is the life of plants. But in order for this Quran, to have the impact it's supposed to have on one's heart and soul, then one must understand it, understand its implications, understand why Allah the Creator sent it down in order for us to act upon it and take it as a code of life. It is intended to be, but without us knowing, we simply won't. This Quran is the best thing anyone can have as a means of getting closer to Allah the Almighty. In the book of Imam al-Tirmidhi and classified as authentic by Sheikh al-Albani, on the authority of Abu Umama radiallahu anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you will never come on the day of judgment with anything, meaning any deed, better than this Qur'an. Reciting it, memorizing it, understanding it, teaching it. Nothing is better. See, the, the honor of a science is due to its relationship with the Creator. And the closest of all sciences is the Qur'an because it is the word of Allah Azza wa Jalla. It's one of His attributes, subhanahu wa ta'ala. See, we honor the science of hadith. Why? Because it's the tradition of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the Qur'an is more honorable and loftier. Why? Because these are the actual words of Allah Azza wa What is the importance of learning tafsir? The interpretation of the meanings of the Qur'an. Well, you will not be able to reflect upon what you're hearing or reading without understanding what it means. In one of the prayers, there was a, a non-Arabic speaking brother in the, in the Salah, and it was Taraweeh. And people started crying. Now he understands nothing of, of the Qur'an. He understands no Arabic. And he started weeping in the Salah. After the Salah, one of the brothers asked him, he said, why are you crying? You don't understand anything. He said, I'm crying because you who understand the Quran can actually reflect upon it and it touches your hearts to the point that you cry. And I feel sorry for myself that I don't understand it and thus I cannot react to the words of Allah. So understanding, learning tafsir, and understanding what Allah Azza wa Jal means or wants to convey to us is a means of reflection and pondering 
upon the Quran and therefore being touched by it. The Quran has the halal and the haram, has the legislations. So one learns his deen and one knows the intended message sent by Allah Azza wa and what it means and what Allah Azza wa wants, what directions He wants us to go to or in which way He wants us or which way He wants us to take. And it is the reference when people dispute. As Allah says, وَإِن تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ When you dispute about a matter, then return it. Your reference is Allah, meaning the Quran, and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There are uh, three ways of interpreting the meaning of the Quran, the tafsir. Either tafsir using the Quran itself, or tafsir using hadith, or tafsir using the statements of the companions of the Prophet For example, Allah Azza wa Jal in the first section or the first category, Allah Azza wa Jal forbade on us to consume uh, blood, right? But He did not give details. But then in another ayah, Allah Azza wa Jal listed few things that are prohibited and one of them is the spilt blood. So the blood that's in a liver and that's, that was also exempted by the Prophet Sallallahu in a narration. But uh, by analogy, this means that the blood in the liver is not considered to be prohibited. As per uh, explaining or interpreting the Quran by means of the Sunnah. Well, Allah Azza wa Jal says, Wa and establish the prayer. But there is no verse in the entire Quran where Allah Azza wa Jal tells us how many prayers, how many rak'ahs, what to do. Right? So the Sunnah comes to interpret and clarify the meaning of the verse. The last category is the category in which we interpret the Quran or the Quran is interpreted by the statements of the companions radiallahu anhum. See the companions were the direct students of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam upon whom the Quran was revealed. They actually lived the, the revelations. They understood the reasons behind the revelations. They understood the applications and implications of the revelations. They took it directly from the mouth of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or from his actions. So they were the best who understood the Quran, as Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, said, he said, there is not a single verse except that I know the meaning of and when it was revealed and why it was revealed. Now, not all verses in the Quran uh, had a direct reason for re the revelation. As a matter of fact, most of the Qur'an was just directly revealed by Allah Azza wa upon Muhammad Right? But there were certain, there are portions of the Qur'an, however, on the other hand, that were revealed for a reason. And knowing or claiming that this is the reason of revelation has to be through a statement a direct, authentic in its chain of narration by one of the companions radiallahu anhu. Al-Ja'bari, may Allah have mercy on him, said 
that the uh, uh, revelations of the Quran were either that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked a question so Allah Azza wa Jal revealed uh, a verse uh, or for a certain incidents, incident where something took place and Allah Azza wa Jal reveals the Quran. The Quran, part of it was revealed in Mecca and part was revealed in Medina and other parts were revealed elsewhere. Like in Arafah, this is neither Mecca nor Medina, for example. While he was on a journey, for example, وسلم, some Quran was revealed. But uh, what makes a, a, a certain verse or certain surah, Meccan or Medinan? There are different uh, opinions amongst the scholars. The uh, predominant opinion about this is that it is with relation to the time of revelations. Others said it's related to the place it was revealed. Uh, the, the predominant opinion is that it is uh, with regards to the time it was revealed. So anything that was revealed upon Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before his migration from Mecca to Medina is considered to be uh, Meccan and anything after his migration is considered to be Medinan, even if it was revealed upon him in Mecca after the migration. Right? For example, Allah Azza wa Jal, in the year of the conquer of Mecca, revealed upon Muhammad in Mecca, in Allah ya'murukum an tu'addu al-amanati ila ahliha. Allah commands you to fulfill the trust to its people. This was revealed in Mecca, but it's Medan. Why? Because it's after the Hijrah. Uh, in Hajjat al uh, this was in, in uh, Arafah. Al Yawma Akmaltu Lakum Dinakum, the surah, uh, the verse in Surah uh, Al Ma'idah, when Allah Azza wa informed us that He perfected and uh, completed the religion. This was revealed in Arafah, but it's Medan. Why? Because it's after the uh, migration. What's the difference between a Meccan and a Medinan verse or, or, or uh, surah? There are many differences. I just uh, will summarize uh, some of them. The style of the Meccan uh, Quran is, is uh, usually uh, aggressive uh, because it's addressing those who are stubborn and arrogant and rebellion against the message of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. While the Medinan uh, Quran is uh, very soft in its uh, style. Why? Because it's addressing uh, the believers. Uh, the Meccan uh, Quran uh, generally has short verses where the Medinan uh, Quran has longer verses. Uh, the Meccan Quran speaks about uh, Islamic monotheism, Tawheed, the, the names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, divinity, lordship of Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, belief in uh, resurrection and uh, the day of uh, account, uh, because it was addressing people who denied resurrection altogether. While the Madinan uh, Quran uh, was more focused on uh, acts of worship, uh, transactions between people, penal laws, uh, because it was the, the stage where the Islamic State was being established and these things were needed. Uh, in, in Mecca, for example, there were no hypocrites and there was no jihad legislated at the time yet. Right? So you will not find in a Meccan verse or surah any mention of the hypocrites or jihad. And therefore, any verse or surah that addresses the issue of the munafiqeen, of hypocrites or jihad, must be therefore madan by default. Uh, any surah that has uh, sujood 
for recitation is Meccan and uh, the uh, verses or surahs that address dialogue and debate with the people of the book are Medinan. Why? Because there are no people of the book uh, with, with whom the Prophet ﷺ interacted in Mecca. The last point in this uh, introduction before we actually start the, uh, the classes of uh, tafsir is uh, naming the uh, surahs. Why do the different surahs have these dif different names? For example, the first surah we're going to start with is Surah Amma or an naba right? Well, uh, the scholars listed three different uh, ways uh, regarding the naming of the surahs. Number one is that a word or a word extracted from a word that is mentioned in the surah. Surah Amma, the first word, Amma. Surah Abasa, Abasa, the first word. Surah Al-Nazi'at, Wal-Nazi'at. Surah Al-Adiyat, Wal-Adiyat. And so on. Right? Uh, or, number two, uh, when that surah has a, a particular story, like for example, the story of the cow, the Baqara. So the chapter was named Al-Baqara. Ali Imran. There is a mention of the people of Imran, the family of Imran. So it was Al-Kahf, the story of the people of the cave, and so on and so forth. The last thing they listed, or the scholars mentioned, with regards to naming the surahs, is uh, that the theme of the surah is talking about a certain thing, a certain topic. So it was given that name to reflect that it is talking about that topic. Uh, with this, we conclude the uh, introduction to tafsir. Uh, and inshallah, we will uh, start the sessions of, of uh, tafsir. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk so we conclude the first session